Good morning. This is the meeting unit one in the deposition of Randy Fine in the matter of the state of Florida versus Robert Burns. Today's date is March 29th, 2024, and the time on the monitor is 9.25 a.m. My name is Chris Gendron. I'm the videographer. The court reporter is Margaret Sheffield. We are here with Hughesby Global Litigation. Counsel, please introduce yourselves, after which the court reporter will swear in the witness. Alan Lambin, on behalf of Mr. Fine, 7195 Morrell Road, Suite 102, Melbourne, Florida. Gary Beatty, Assistant State Attorney. Jessica Travis, on behalf of Mr. Burns. Mr. Fine, raise your right hand, please, sir. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so be God? I do. Thank you, sir. Will you tell us your name, please? Randy Fine. All right, Mr. Fine, have you done a deposition in the past? I have. Okay. So you should probably understand the parameters, but this is not a conversation. It's a deposition, and so I will be asking questions, and you can answer. The attorneys can object, and we'll take those up as they happen. But if you don't understand one of my questions, just ask me to rephrase, and I'll do so. Okay? Okay. All right. Um, and you are present today with your attorney, Mr. Landman, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you are here um, under subpoena, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I think we all know this, but tell me generally how you're employed or occupied or what you do. Um, I'm retired um, professionally, but, but I am a state representative, which is a part-time job here in the state of Florida. Okay. And what district? The 33rd district of the Florida House. And what did you do before you were state representative? Um, I was an entrepreneur for many years. And in what field? Um, variety. Like what? Software, retail, gaming. When did you first run for office? Uh, my first election was in 2016. Did you win that election? I did. So have you been a state representative since then? Yes. Are you running for election now? Yes. Um, is it a different position? Yes. What position is that? The state senate. Okay. All right. We are here today to talk about an incident that occurred on August 10th of 2023 between Robert Burns and Karen Colby at the Avis at the Melbourne Mall. Are you aware of that incident? Yes. How are you aware of that? Um, I heard about it from Miss Colby after it happened. I've seen a video that Mr. Burns um, recorded and posted to social media. And I guess, you know, just having been, you know, d d subpoenaed in the case, but, you know, sort of public information. Okay. When you say you heard about it from Miss Colby after it happened, I assume that implies that you were not there, correct? Correct. Okay. And how did she contact you? She called me. In relation to the incident, what was your understanding about when she called you? How soon after the incident? I think immediately after the incident. Okay. You referenced a video of the incident. Um, in that video, um, when Ms. Colby is on the 911 call, she references you or ask dispatch to contact you. Did 911 or dispatch ever contact you about this? Not that I remember. Okay. <coughs> so your first awareness of the incident was a call from Ms. Colby immediately after? I that? believe so. Okay. Did she text you as well or was it just a call? My memory is it was a call. Okay. And she was still at the Avis, I take it? I believe so. Do you know if law enforcement had arrived yet? I don't think so. Okay. Um, did you hear any law enforcement or anything like that in the background during your call with Ms. Colby? No. Okay. What did Ms. Colby tell you happened? She was incredibly upset, um, like hyperventilating is the word that would come to mind, and she was very, she was incredibly scared. Uh, Mr. Burns had apparently come and threatened her repeatedly and refused to leave her, her business, and so she was scared, and so that's, that's what I remember. Okay. 
So you interpreted her demeanor to be scared based on what what things was she ex exhibiting to you during that call that caused you to interpret being scared? Did she say she was scared or was it just her demeanor? Oh no, she she was scared. She I believe she said she he threatened her. He'd refused to leave. Um, was she speaking rapidly or anything else like that? Oh, would yes. cause you to think that she was upset? Yeah, I mean she was she was crying. So she was speaking rapidly and crying. Mm -hmm. Is yes. that a yes? And I'm not. I know you meant yes. Yes. But I'm trying to make the record clear. Okay. How long do you think he spoke to her? I don't remember exactly, but a minute, maybe two. Okay. Did she indicate to you what uh, Mr. Burns was upset about? Not that I remember. Okay. Were you aware of this post that she had made on Mayor Alfrey's page? No. When Have you ever become aware of that post? I've heard about it. How did you hear about it? I don't remember. Did you hear about it before or after this call with Ms. Colby? Colby? Oh, after. Or was it during? No, no, after. How many times do you think you talked to Miss Colby while she was still at the Avis after this happened? I don't know. Okay. Is it possible then that you talked to her more than once while she was still at Avis? It's possible, but I don't know. I don't remember. I remember the one call. Okay. Did you give her any advice or anything like that? I did. What was the advice? Call the police. Okay. Had she not done that? Well, actually, I think she it was after the 911 call. Was that your understanding? I don't know. I don't. I didn't. Like I said, the call was short. Okay. So you don't recall if she had called 911 yet or not? I don't. Did you offer to do anything for her to help her out? No. Did you offer to contact the sheriff or anything on her behalf? No. Did you offer to contact Melbourne law enforcement, state attorney, anyone else on her behalf? No. Did you actually contact anyone on her behalf? No. Now, to be clear, immediately after this occurred, you did not contact anyone about this incident? Not that I recall, no. That was related to law enforcement or prosecutorial? Not that I recall, no. What was the next thing you knew about this incident after the call with Ms. Colby? I, I don't remember. Are you aware that Ms. Colby went back later that same night and gave like an additional statement or information to the police? I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. She didn't go back to Avis, but that she met up with the police later that same night and gave additional information. I'm aware of that now. Okay. How are you aware? What, what do you mean by you're aware of that now? I may have read that in one of the filings, you know, as I've tried to keep track of what I would have to do here, but I don't remember knowing it at the time. I don't, I don't know the details. Okay. So did Ms. Colby, before she, you know, this thing happened earlier in the day in Avis, and then later she meets back up with the police and she gives additional information. Did you talk to her after your call with her at Avis, but before she went back? I may have, but I don't remember. Did you ever tell her to reach out to law enforcement again to provide the video that surfaced on the internet? I don't remember. Did you ever ask her to contact law enforcement again to press for Mr. Burns' immediate arrest? I don't remember. Did you ever advise her that she should do everything in her power to press for Mr. Burns' immediate arrest? I don't remember.
that day of August 10th of 2023. We know you spoke with her once. <coughs> Do you recall if you spoke with her again on that day at all? I may have, but I don't remember. Safe to say that you have Miss Colby's cell phone number and she has yours, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you only have one phone that you use? Um, I only have one cell phone that I use. Okay. Is that the phone that you would have contacted her with? Yes. Is that through Verizon? Um, I believe so. Is that um, an account that's in your name? I believe so. Okay. In other words, it's not paid for by the government or any party or anything like that? Yeah, the, my cell phone is paid for by, by me. Okay, and the account is in your name? It may be in my, my family's name, but it's not a government account. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Okay, well, you posted on social media about this event, correct? I don't remember. I may have. You are being handed a composite exhibit, and it is, is it marked? It says, no, it's got the oh, one. I think this is on it, yeah, I just went with the one. I'll oh, okay, all right, well, right. okay, we'll refer to that as um, Defendant's Exhibit 1, then. The whole thing, or just yes, it's the a, first page? Yes. So every, everything in this binder clip? Yes, it's okay. Exhibit 1 with several pages, correct? Okay, okay. yeah. All right, and do you recognize the front page, page one? Yes. Okay, what do you recognize that to be? I mean, it appears to be a printout of the, of the front page of my personal um, social media. Okay. Um, so then you would agree that this account, this, um, that you have a social media account under the name of State Representative Randy Fine. Yes. And that, that would be um, the photo that you have up currently. Is that correct? I believe so. All right. Let me direct your attention to page two. Do you recognize uh, that post dated August 11th of 2023? I don't, but I mean, if you print it, I make a lot of posts, so. If you took it off the page, I don't have any reason to think it's not mine. Okay. Let me direct your attention to page three, which is a little bit better close up of, of what was posted. Um, and take a second to read that the whole thing. to yourself. Yeah, okay. I just, I'm going to ask you some questions about it. So. All right.
Okay. Okay. Um, does this appear to be a post that you made on August 11th of 2023 on your state representative Randy Fine Facebook page about the incident? It does. Okay. Um, this is obviously dated, would be dated the day after the incident. Would you agree? I, I don't remember when okay. the incident was, but I'll take your word for okay. it. Okay. If I told you it was August 10th, yeah. this would logically be the day after. Okay. Um, there's some information in here that I wanted to ask you about. Um, it says at the top paragraph, um, you start out talking about this is a very disturbing video, and I assume um, this is a screenshot down below of that video that's on your social media. Where did you get that video from? Uh, from Mr. Burns. Okay. Mr. Burns sent it to you, or was it posted somewhere? He posted it publicly. Okay. Do you recall where he posted it publicly? Yeah, I believe it was a YouTube page okay. um, for for his fake news site. Okay. What news site is that? It's this fake blog called the Space Coast Rocket. Why do you call it fake? Because it traffics in fake news. Okay. Things that you don't believe are truthful? Is that what you mean by that? No. Things that aren't truthful. Okay. Um, and... How did you find out that the video was posted? Someone texted me. Do you recall who that was? I do. It was a woman named Janice Crisp. Okay. Um, and it, this information in here says that Mr. Burns went into the business office. Is that something that Miss Colby told you before you saw the video? Do you recall? I, I don't. But I, I, when she called me, she was at Avis, and that's where she works. Okay. So, I mean, I think, I mean, it was sort of an obvious statement. Okay, so that's what you meant by that, that he came into the Avis. Is that correct? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. It's where she works. It's right. a business office. When Miss Colby called you right after the incident, did she tell you or mention anything about a gun? Not that I remember. Okay. Did she mention anything about a battery or a touching? Uh, yes, I believe so. Tell me what you recall about that. I believe that she told me he kept her from calling the police. Okay. Did she tell you specifically how that was done? Not, not, I mean, I can tell you as best I remember, but it, you know, mem it's been a while, so. Okay. Well, with that caveat, understandably, what, what is it that you recall? Yeah, I, I, something about the phone being forced, you know, to be hung up. Okay. Um, other than that, did she mention any battery or touching to you when she called you right after the incident? Not that I recall. Okay. Um, all right, directing your attention back to this page three of Exhibit 1. So there's a part in here that says, including physically stopping her from calling 911. That's something that she told you when she called you right afterwards. Is that correct? Well, if, I, if memory serves, you can, I believe you can see it on the video. Okay. So. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out if you learned it from the video or if she told you that. Do you recall? She may have told me that, um, but you can, I believe, I, I haven't watched this video in a long time, but I believe you can, I be, what I remember is you can tell that he prevents physically prevents her from calling. Okay. <coughs> you mention on here um, in the last end of the last paragraph that uh, Burns quote claimed to be upset about some cryptic comment Miss Colby made on social media about the children that he has not lost parental rights to after his arrest for first degree child abuse. End quote. How did you, you, you told us earlier that you learned about the social media post after the fact, but obviously you knew about it the day after this incident. Do you recall how you I, learned about that? I think that? I knew, look, I, I knew, yeah, look, it's all, it's all baloney, but I, but I don't know that I'd actually read the comment, nor would I care because it's obviously not motivating, but but I don't I don't know that I'd actually seen the comment. I just knew that that was the that was the specious claim that was made to justify his violence. And how did you know that that was the claim? I think he 
talks about it in the video. Okay. Prior to watching the video, did you know that that was the reason why he was upset? In other words, did Ms. Cole oh, tell I, I, you? I, that's not the reason he's upset, but but I, that's the claim. But I don't know. I don't. I don't recall if I knew about it prior to watching the video. Okay. What What do you think the reason is then that he's upset? That he said that's the claim. Oh, I don't think he's upset at all. I, look, this is this is someone who's a sociopath. I mean, I don't think he's upset at all. Well, you mentioned on here that, and I don't know if this is a typo, but something about children that he has not lost parental rights to. Is that a, is that, that reads a little funny. Is that the way? Sure. Um, you intended it? That's, that, that's an accurate statement. Okay. Were you implying that he's lost? I, I really don't understand what that means. Were you implying he's lost parental rights? Yes. Okay. Why do you think he's lost parental rights? Um, he has a son that he apparently has no contact with you know, after his arrest for first degree child abuse of that child. Okay. And did he lose parental rights to that child? That's my understanding. What's that based on, your understanding? Conversations I've had over time with folks. Did you talk to the mother of the child about this? I don't know that I've actually spoken to the mother, but I think I've spoken to folks who know the mother. Okay, and you mentioned an arrest for first degree child abuse. I yes. think on other social media posts, you've actually posted those police reports. Um, you're aware he was never convicted of anything in relation to that, right? Yes, I think the statement here is accurate. Okay, but your statement here is accurate in that he was arrested, but are you aware that he was never convicted? I've never seen any evidence that he was convicted, but okay. you know, I don't know that the facts in question have ever been challenged. Have you ever done any research to see whether or not he was convicted? I uh, don't recall. You yourself have never been arrested for anything, have you? No. Not been convicted of anything, have you? No. All right. Um, and then in the next paragraph, you say that Mr. Burns is the boyfriend of Rivard School Board member Jennifer <coughs> Jenkins. What's your basis for that statement? Um, videos that I've seen of uh, of Miss Jenkins, you know, repeatedly going in and out of his home, you know, with sort of odd dates and times. Okay. Anything else other than those videos? Um, yeah. Secondhand information where Miss Jenkins has told people that and they've they've told me. So you've gotten hearsay information that supposedly Miss Jenkins is saying their boy <coughs> and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And these are videos um, from an investigator? No. Okay. Where the, what are the videos that you reference? Uh, these are videos from neighbors. Okay. The third paragraph, you mentioned, mentioned Johnson. Who's Johnson in relation to this incident? Uh, he is a cousin of Mr. Burns. What's his name? I mentioned in the first paragraph, Kenny Johnson. Okay, why is he, is, <coughs> it, is he relevant to what happened on August 10th of 2023? I mean, is he involved that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. The last paragraph you have in here, Mr. Quote, Mr. Burns has been arrested and or convicted of multiple violent crimes. In quote, what are you referencing there? Um, well, he's been arrested um, for rape and forcible sodomy. Um, he's been arrested and convicted for beating his wife. Um, multiple other sort of batteries and just, I mean, his arrest record, you know, is a, is a mile long. What else besides those three things? Um, 
multiple times for, for stealing equipment from the military, you know, after which he, he uh, you know, got PTSD. Um, multiple women have gone to law enforcement about him raping them. Um, I, I, I can't remember them all. It's, it's, it's such a long list. It's somewhat sad. I think a, an arrest for making a roofies. Are you aware that that so-called roofies arrest is not this Mr. Burns? Have you ever done any research to figure that out? Um, I, I'm under the impression that it is, but uh, you know, if you say it's not. Are you aware that the beating the wife incident was an assault in which there was a struggle over keys and he was given a misdemeanor time served? I understand that he had a violent incident with a woman and was convicted of it. Okay. Is that when, when you say a violent incident with a woman, is that what you're talking about? Is this struggle over keys with his wife? Or are you talking about something else? I understand he's been convicted of violence against women. Okay. What specific? That incident, which I understand how you phrase it, but he was convicted for being violent with a woman. Okay. Is it that incident that you're talking about out of South Carolina with his wife? Yes. Okay. When you say that he's been arrested for rape and forcible sodomy, was he actually arrested on that? I mean, I've seen a, a document from the military. It's a charging document. So. Okay. So he was not arrested by the police. He was charged by the military. Is that correct? Is that your understanding? I guess. Yes. Okay. And in fact, he was not found guilty by the military of either of those things. Are you aware of that? I understand there was a plea deal. Okay. And so he was not convicted of either of those things. Is that your understanding? Correct. Okay. Now the stealing military equipment, he wasn't convicted there either, was he? I don't recall. Sure has a lot of charges, though, for one person. Mm -hmm. And the multiple rapes, other than the one that we've referenced with the military, have any of those been arrested or charged that you're aware of? Um, I don't know. Do you know who Brooke Orsini is? Yes. How do you know who she is? Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know how I came to know who she is, but I, I mean, I know of her. What do you know of her? Um, I know that she used to work for Mr. Burns. And you don't recall how you learned that? No. Have you spoken with Brooke Orsini? No. Have you spoken to Karen Colby about Brooke Orsini? Not that I recall. Have you spoken to Vic Lubker about Brooke Orsini? Not that I recall. Have you talked to anybody in law enforcement or with the state attorney's office about Brooke Orsini? I talked, yes. Who did you talk to? Uh, someone in the sheriff's office. Was it Agent Sweet? I don't recall who it was. <coughs> was it a female officer? Not that I remember. When did this conversation take place? I don't remember. What was your purpose of contacting BCSO about Brooke Orsini? Miss Orsini had reached out to me to tell me that Robert Burns had raped her and to ask me to connect her to law enforcement. How did she reach out to you? On, on social media messaging. Facebook? I believe so. How does she know to contact you? I don't know. So she reached out to you first? Correct. You don't know how she got your information? Well, I mean, you can go to my web, 
you can go to my Facebook page and hit the messaging button and send me a message. So it's not as though you have to like get the information. If you go to my, anyone can do it. That's how she reached out. Did she tell you why she would have reached out to you first rather than going to law enforcement directly? I don't know why she reached out to me. Was that the first time you were aware she existed? No. You were aware of Brooke Orsini before then? Yes. Again, how did you learn about her? I think that she showed up on Mr. Burns' fake news site from time to time. Okay. You actually posted some information about her, did you not, on your Facebook page? I don't remember doing that, but as I said before, I post a lot on my Facebook page. Do you recall posting her booking photo on another case on your Facebook page? I don't, but I may have. Was it after the Avis incident on August 10th of 23 that she reached out to you about this rape? Yes. How much after the incident do you recall? A long time after. So more than, more than days, obviously. More, yes. More than weeks. Yes. Was it more than months? This was it was more than a couple of months. Okay. So the Avis incident is on August tenth of two thousand and twenty-three. You may or may not have posted about Miss Orsini in the meantime. Would you agree? Before she reached out to you. Yes. And the purpose of, of posting about her would have been what? I think you mentioned she showed up on the video. I, I don't recall. I told you I don't remember okay. making the post. Have you communicated with other women other than the woman from Colorado slash Kansas that was involved in the military incident and Miss Orsini? Have you communicated with other women that have alleged that Mr. Burns has raped them? Yes. How many? One that I can recall. Okay. And did that person make a police report that you're they aware did. of? They did. Mm -hmm. Any others? Not that I can recall. Okay. Actually, no, that's not true. Wait, can you ask your question again? Other than Miss Orsini and the woman out of Colorado slash Kansas that was involved in the military incident, have you communicated with other women who have alleged that Mr. Burns has raped them? Yes. And one that, that you can recall or more than one? Two. Two, okay. Did both of those make police reports? I don't know whether both of them did. I know that one did. Okay. Do you recall their names? Um, I do. What are their names? I remember one of their names. Okay. What is that? Vesta Burns. Okay. Vesta Burns being Mr. Burns' ex-wife? Correct. Okay. How did you come to communicate with her? I don't recall. Did she give you any documentation or paperwork in regards to Mr. Burns? Yes. What did she give you? Um some documents about 
his various criminal activity. Um, including the South Carolina incident? I don't recall. Now, um, Vesta Burns um, has children's children with Robert Burns, is that correct? That's my understanding. Is it two girls? <coughs> That's my understanding. Okay. And Vesta Burns was either dating or living with Mayor Melbourne Mayor Paul Alfrey at one time, is that correct? I don't know. Were they in a relationship that you were aware of? I believe they were. You are aware that uh, Karen Colby's post on that day was on August 10th of 23, was um, on Mayor Alfrey's Facebook page. Is that correct? I, I, as I told you, I don't know about the post. Okay. On August 10th of 2023, were you and Mayor Alfrey having any disagreements? I mean, I'll, I'll, I think without, to get to the, but I don't look at Paul Alfrey's social media, so, so I wouldn't, I didn't see it, wouldn't have seen it. Okay, but were you having any disagreements with Mr. Alfrey at that time over Pride or the Drag Queen Story Hour, or whatever it's called? I think it's, it's fair to say we had a falling out, and okay. so, yeah, we're not in communication. Was that the cause, the disagreement over that issue? No. What was the falling out? Um, it was about how Mr. Alfrey chose to handle that, the, 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 the disagreement on that issue. On the pride slash story hour issue? Yeah, the, the grooming of children. Okay. So you considered what, what, I mean, the nature of that disagreement was that Mr. Alfrey's Support or allowing that to continue was essentially grooming of children. Is that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, is that the gist of the disagreement? Um, can you ask the question again? I'm not oh. sure what this has to do with anything. Well, you mentioned the grooming of children and mm -hmm. then the disagreement with Mr. Alfrey. Right, was I'm not over. sure what this has to do with Mr. Okay. Burns, but, um, but I'm sorry if you could ask what, that again. Your position was that. I had an issue, and this is, I, I, have, I had an issue with the city of Melbourne. Um, allowing their city ordinance to be broken and allowing sexual activities around children. Okay. Essentially, um, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you considered exposure to those types of activities to basically amount to grooming of children. I, I think you're asking a very complicated question that has nothing to do with this. Okay, well you mentioned the word grooming. I understand, but okay. I'm not accusing Mr. Burns of grooming. I'm not sure what this has to do well, with, with Ms. anything. Ms. So. Colby's post on Mayor Alfrey's Facebook page that day was okay. specifically targeted and towards allowing the grooming of Mr. Burns' children who were staying with Mr. Alfrey at the time due to the relationship with Vesta Burns. So it's interesting to me that you're using the word grooming and yet Miss Colby was also using the word grooming. I wasn't aware that Miss Colby's post uses the word used the word grooming. Okay. So Have you ever asked Miss Colby to act as kind of a proxy for you to give certain people a hard time that you are having feuds with? No. Have you ever asked anybody else to act as proxies for you to give people a hard time that you're having a disagreement with? Not that I can recall. Have you ever asked Janice Crisp? to act as a proxy for you and give people a hard time that you disagree with? Not that I can remember, no. Okay. You've never asked Miss Colby or Miss Crisp to give Robert Burns a hard time because you have disagreements with him? Not that I remember, no. And you don't have never asked Miss Colby or Miss Crisp to give Mayor Alfrey a hard time because you have disagreements with them? Not that I remember, no. Okay. Let's go back to the social media. Do you still have that? I give it to somebody. Okay. All right, let me direct your attention to page four. You have a statement there, the last paragraph mentions that Burns is forbidden from owning 
guns due to a restraining order from a previous victim of sexual violence in Colorado. What's, what's the basis for that? Just, I need to reread this. Okay. I believe that um, Mr. Burns has a permanent restraining order against the woman that he raped and sodomized in, and in Colorado. And as part of that permanent restraining order, he's not allowed to possess firearms. Have you ever obtained a copy of that restraining order? I believe so. All right, let me drag, um, draw your attention to page five. Page five. Uh, do you recognize this to be appear to be a social media post that you made on August 14th of 2023? Yes. Okay. In it, you're stating, quote, Melbourne's drag queen story time has been canceled next month, end quote. Uh, why were you posting about that? I don't remember. Okay. I mean, was it something that you were glad had happened? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let me direct your attention to the next page which um, includes some comments to that post. Someone on there uh, made a comment, the person's name is Talk About Martin, and they made a comment, quote, poor Richard Burns deterred will not have any place to take, to play with his kids, the horror. Um, and you liked that comment. Do you recall liking that comment? I don't. Okay, would you have liked that comment? I don't know. Okay. Let me draw your attention to the next page, which appears to be a post by you on September 12th of 2023 that has Mr. Burns' booking photo from when he turned himself in in Orange County, and you stated, quote, it's a good day. Why was it a good day? Why would you make that post? Because it was a good day. Why? Because this man's a sociopath and should be in prison. Okay. Let me direct your attention to the next page. Appears to be a post made by you on September 13th of 23. I'll let you read that to yourself and then I'll ask you questions. So um, this, would you agree, is a specifically a post that you made about the fact that Robert Burns had been charged, is that correct? It, it appears that way. Okay. And in the second paragraph, you state, quote, Mr. Burns was arrested because of what he and he alone did. Um, he was arrested because he videoed himself doing it. He was arrested because he posted that video to social media likely to further threaten Miss Colby. He has no one to blame but himself, uh, end quote. Um, so at this time, at least by now, you were, were you, you were, well, let me ask, strike that. Do you think that by this time you were well aware that Miss Colby had posted something on Alfrey's Facebook page? This is over a month later. Do you think you were aware of it by then? I was aware that that Miss Colby had posted something to to Mr. Alfrey's Facebook page. I, I reject the premise that that had anything to do with any of this. Okay. But but yes, I'm I'm aware of that kind of made up issue. Well, and you post on here. This is because of what he and he alone did. So that's your opinion. It has nothing to do with that post. Would you reiterate it here today? Is that what you're conveying there? No. Okay. What are you conveying? I believe that when Mr. Burns was arrested, he blamed me, you and he blamed me for his arrest. And I was basically making the statement that I, as I would say again today, had nothing to do with it. He got arrested because of what he did, not anybody else. Okay. So you didn't take any personal interest in trying to get him arrested? Mm, personal interest. I mean, obviously, I, w I was interested. So mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to have to ask 
the question differently. Well, let's do this. He wasn't arrested right away. It was like there were no charges for over a month, about a month. And what? And did you take any interest in that meantime to help Miss Colby or to encourage charges or anything like that? You're going to have to ask that a more specific question. I just okay. don't. I don't even know what to do with that. Well, in between the August 10th of 2023 to. Um, let's just say by the date of this post, September 13th, which is after we know he turned himself in on the warrant. So in between the time of the incident and charges and this post, did you do anything to contact any officials or anything like that to encourage the charges be filed? Not that I recall, no. You didn't call anybody? No, not that I recall. No. You didn't call anybody with the state attorney's office? Oh, that I can tell you definitively, no. Okay. You didn't call Phil Archer? No. Did you call Melbourne uh, Chief of Police Gillespie? Not that I recall. I may have called. I mean, again, those are the sort of people <coughs> I talk to in the in the course of my business. But I haven't spoken to Phil Archer in years, which is why I could tell you definitively no on anything. Did you talk to anybody else with his office? No, I haven't spoken other than uh, prior to this date. I hadn't spoken to anybody in Phil Archer's office, I don't believe, in quite some time. There was actually an intake attorney by the name of Kip, and I always butcher his name. It's Vugtebeen, I can't say it. I think it's spelled V-U-G-T-E-B-E-N. Um, did you talk to him, the intake attorney? Not that I remember. Did you talk to Greg Kaneska? Who? Greg Kaneska, he's also with the state attorney's office. Not that I remember. Um, it's possible that you talked to Melbourne Chief Gillespie? It's possible, yes. What, if you did, what would, why would you have talked to the chief? I talk to chiefs as a police in the areas that I represent fairly frequently. Well, let me put it this way. Is it possible that you talked to Chief Gillespie about the Burns-Colby argument on August 10th of 23? I don't remember. So that means it's possible, correct, that you could have talked to him? Like I said, I don't remember. Okay. Did you talk to any of the officers who responded to Avis? I don't believe so, but I don't remember. All right, in the next paragraph, which would be the third paragraph, you rep you represent that Mr. Burns has stalked you and your family, including your mother, who has a form of Alzheimer's for the past five years. What are you referencing there? I think the sentence speaks for itself. Why, why would you say that he had stalked your mother who has Alzheimer's? What did he do? Yeah, Mr. Burns reached out to my mom a year, uh, several years ago, who, as I mentioned, has Alzheimer's, claiming that he had a video of me um, uh, I believe it was having sexual relations with uh, hookers in my legislative office. As is many things with the sociopath, that was a lie. And, but obviously my mom, who's not uh, in the best of shape, found it very upsetting. Are there any other incidents? With my mother? Yeah, specific to your mother. No. I don't know how many incidents you get like that before you think somebody's a scumbag. Okay. Well, the reason I ask is the legal definition of stalking is usually two or more incidents. Um, but I, I'm not, I know that you're not speaking necessarily legally here, but I just want to make sure I understand all the incidents. I also didn't say, uh, I mean, again, legally, me and my family is not simply my mother. Yeah. What other stalking do you think he's engaged in? Um, he he uh, trespassed on my property, claimed to have broken into it. Um, he sent me repeated um, anti-Semitic text messages from a burner phone that was traced back to him. Um, I mean, all I, I, it, you could write a book on what this sociopath has done. When he trespassed on your property and broke in, you mean your house? Uh, the, I, where I lived, yeah. And uh, by the way, he claimed he broke in. He, he, I don't, he didn't actually break in, but he claimed that he had broken in. That he physically broke into where yes. you were living at the time. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? I know it's yes. a yes, but yes. yes. Okay. Um, 
All right. The next page, which appears to be a post that you made on September 15th of 2023, you said the last sentence, this is not someone who defends children, this is someone abuses who abuses them. And I, I believe these police reports that you have up there about are about uh, when his son was left in the car at the casino. Is that right? Yes. Any other instances of child abuse that you're aware of? No. Okay. And are you aware he was not convicted of anything in relation to that incident? I'm aware that the facts as put here have never been disputed. Okay. Have you ever done any research to see if he was ever convicted? Um, I don't remember. I mean, you generally understand that police reports are based on probable cause, correct? I'm not an attorney. Okay. All right, and then let me direct your attention to the next page. Here's to be a post, the top one, that you made on September 19th of 2023. And you mentioned Robert Burns and quote, will we need to see another mugshot soon? Why would you have mentioned that? I need to read it. I don't remember what I was thinking at the time. Okay, let's go to the next page. Here's to be a post that you made on March 11th. It doesn't have the um, year on there, but it's 2024. And you reference, call Mr. Burns a convicted violent criminal. This time you actually don't say arrest, you say convicted violent criminal. What is the basis for that statement? Yeah, beating his wife. Okay, the incident out of South Carolina? Correct. Any others? I don't know how many times you have to beat your wife to be considered a convicted violent criminal. Are you criminal. aware of any other incidents that you would call violent, convicted violent crimes? Well, violent crimes, I, I consider all of the rapes and sodomies that I've heard about to be right. violent crimes. But specific to here, you say, quote, convicted violent crimes. So you're specifically referring to things he was convicted of. So this thing in South Carolina. I think you're, you're, you're I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I can read. Um, it says convicted violent criminal. It makes no reference to, to crimes. Okay, yes, correct. Quote, convicted violent criminal. So in making that statement, just to make sure I'm clear, the only incident that you're aware of that you would consider a convicted violent crime is the one out of South Carolina, or are there others? Given that that's not what this says, I'm not gonna answer that. Is that a, I don't know? It's, you're asking me about something that doesn't exist. Well, are you aware of any other convictions for violent crimes other than the incident in South Carolina? I think there have been I think it depends on what your definition of violent crime is, but I, I think there have been, if I remember right, some gun issues, there have been some physical issues. Um, I mean, again, it, the, the, the rap sheet is so long, it's hard to keep track of it all. Where were the gun and physical issues? At? I don't recall. Have you talked to Renee Torpy about the Colby Burns incident on August 10th of 2023? No. You're aware that she was assisting Miss Colby, is that correct? No. So you did not help Miss Colby draft her um, injunction paperwork? No. Did you give her any advice on whether or not she should seek an injunction? I, you'd have to ask me. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Okay. Well, a restraining order. Some people call injunctions restraining orders. Did you ever tell Ms. Colby she should seek a restraining order? I don't remember. Have you ever talked to Brian Lober about the August 10th of 2023 incident between Mr. Burns and Ms. Colby? Not that I recall. Have you talked to Vic Luker at all about the incident between 
uh, Burns and Colby on August 10th of 2023? I don't believe so. Okay, no, let me clarify. When I say talk, I mean text, email, signal, social media, actually talking on the phone, actually talking in the person, emailing, any of those kinds of things. Does that change your answer at all in regards to these people that I've asked you about? I, you would want to go back and ask okay. me again. Let me ask you this. So with that clarification that the word talk includes all of those things. When you, you, right, you misspoke. You meant communicated. I understand. It. Okay. Um, have you talked or communicated with Renee Torpy? No. About the incident between Burns and Colby on August 10th of 2023? No. Okay. Have you talked or communicated with um, Mr. Lober about the incident? Not that I recall. Have you talked or communicated with Vic Lubker? about the incident? I, he may have sent me some Facebook messages, you know, as this thing became public, but Is I mean, he, nothing substantial. Was he the one that made you aware of Brooke Orsini? No. Did he send you screenshots of conversations that he had with Brooke Orsini? Not that I recall. Have you talked or communicated at any time with anyone at the state attorney's office about the August 10th of 2023 incident between Mr. Burns and Ms. Colby? Yes. And who have you communicated with? I talked to Mr. Beatty. Okay. When did you talk to Mr. Beatty? I don't remember when. Well, I, I can roughly remember it was after you made clear that you wanted me to be a witness in the case. Okay. After I listed you as a witness, I I don't I don't know that. It's just yeah. when I was aware that you wanted to, me to be involved in this. Okay. How many times do you think you've talked to Mr. Beatty? I remember one. There may have been another. I don't remember, but not many times. Was it by the phone? Or, yes. Okay. Did you ever meet with him in person? No. I, this is the first time I've ever seen him. Okay. Did you talk to Mr. Beatty or anybody in the state attorney's office about? Um, my attempt to serve you on, I think it was October 30th or 31st of 2023. Did you ever call them to complain about that? I've never complained to anyone about you trying to serve me in this case. Okay. Have you ever complained about me at all? Yes. Okay. And was it after my investigator came to your office on October 30th? It was either 30th or the 31st. As I sit here now, I can't recall. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. I mean, it has nothing to do with what happened in, in, with Mr. Burns on August 10th. Okay. I'm happy to answer questions about that. I think I've been very willing to answer questions that are absolutely irrelevant okay. to the situation, but I'm not going to answer that. But I am Mr. Burns' attorney, and this you is are. my deposition. Yep, and I'm telling you and I'm so not. so I'm entitled to explore bias that you might have against me, and therefore... You're welcome to ask that, but, yeah. but I have not complained about your attempting to serve me in this case. But you have complained about me... Is that correct? Correct. Okay, and you have complained about me in a letter to the clerk. Is that correct? Uh, I don't recall who the letter was to. Okay, but you did write a letter dated October 31st of 2023 complaining about me. Is that correct? Yes. And it was sent to the clerk. I, I don't remember who it was sent to, but yes, okay. I did complain. And did you contact the state attorney's office as well and have conversation with Mr. Beatty or anyone else about that same complaint? I don't recall. At any time, did um, you talk to either um, the conservative political voice or AKA Florida voice about this incident on October 10th of 2023? I'm sorry, can you ask me again? Well, do you know what the conservative political voice or the Florida voice is? I do. Okay, what is that? It's a news outlet. And do you know uh, Amber Jo Cooper? Yes. And who is she? She's a reporter for them. Okay. Did you talk to them at all about this incident between Burns and Colby on August 10th of 2023? I don't recall. Have you talked to them about Mr. Burns since that date on anything? Yes. For what reason? Um, Mr. Burns got into some sort of altercation with the publisher of the of the periodical at some event in Brevard County. 
and I've heard about that. Okay, and I think it was some event or debate at Kelly's. Is that, are we referring to the same thing? I, I don't know, okay. I wasn't there. Did you tell the state attorney's office about that altercation as well? I don't recall. Did you talk to um, the conservative political voice, comma, Florida voice, or Amber Jo Cooper about anything else related to Mr. Burns since August 10th of 23? I don't remember. Did you talk to them about Ms. Orsini? I don't remember. Did you ever talk to them about the fact that Ms. Orsini was going to claim, had contacted you claiming that Mr. Burns had raped her? I don't believe so. Do you have any explanation about why they would have sent an email out asking for comment on that issue before that issue was public? No, I wasn't aware that they had. Do you know who Andrew Benhaus is? Yes. And his last name, as I understand it, is spelled B-E-N-H-A-S. Um, am I pronouncing his name right, according no. to your understanding? How is it pronounced? It's Ben Hayes. Ben Hayes. Who is Mr. Ben Hayes? He's a friend of mine whose kids are in Boy Scouts with my children. Do you ever use him as a proxy to contact anybody? No. Do you know why Mr. Ben Hayes would have sent an email to the state attorney's office on September 13th um, encouraging charges against Mr. Burns? No. Were you aware that Ms. Colby in her injunction slash restraining order paperwork had attached an MRI record? No. You know, you're aware that after Mr. Burns turned himself in or about the same time he, he posted some a story on the Space Coast rocket about it. Are you aware of that? Yes. Okay. And um, are you aware that there were some comments on there? Let me get it out for me. So. I'd like to take a bathroom break. And okay. If, gonna take if now's a, a good time because you're going to look for something. Yeah. Going off the video record, the time is 10.28 a.m. Coming back on the video record, the time is 10.34 a.m. All right. Prior to the break, I asked you if you recalled when Mr. Burns um, posted an article around the time he turned himself in on the warrant. And I believe he said yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And do you recall asking the FDLE to do an investigation? about that article or any comments to that article? Vaguely, yes. Okay. Let me see if I could jog your memory. Do you remember um, making a complaint about a comment by a, someone by the name of Johnny Oculus? Does that ring a bell? I think so, yeah. Okay. And I believe the comment that probably caused you concern was um, okay, that does it, it's Second Amendment time. Does that jog your memory? It does, yes. Okay. And this was a comment to Mr. Burns' article that we were just talking about. I believe so. Okay. And you asked the FDLE to do an investigation into that? Um, no. Did you ask anybody to do an investigation? I didn't. Was there an investigation? I believe there was. How did that come about? Um, when, as a legislator, we get things that we think are, are threats, we notify the House Sergeant at Arms, and then he, you know, reviews them, and then if, uh, if then he asks for whatever action he thinks is warranted. I think in this case, you know, the person, whoever it was, who made that comment was, was basically saying, it's time to kill me, um, and so... I guess they decided to, you know, move forward. Did you talk to the FDLE about that? I don't remember. Okay. 
Um, do you recall talking to an investigator, Douglas Stribling? I don't remember, no. Do you recall asking them to look into um, investigating Mr. Burns for inciting violence? I don't. Is it possible that you did? It is. Did you talk to the state attorney's office, anybody with the state attorney's office about these issues as well? I don't believe so, but I don't remember. At any time, did Miss Colby tell you that she thought Mr. Burns had a gun? I don't recall. Did you ever talk to her later after August 10th about the fact that he might have had a I'm gun? I'm sorry, you need, I, I want to go back. Can you, you need to clarify that question. On August 10th of 2023, did Miss Colby ever tell you that she believed Mr. Burns had a gun? I don't recall. Did she later tell you that she thought Mr. Burns might have had a gun? I'm gonna help answer your question by, on that, on the date of August 10th? Right. Oh, I, I don't remember. Okay. But she has talked about him having a gun, you know, in other, having a gun in general, but, but I don't recall anything about okay. on, on that date. Let me ask you specifically, after August 10th, did she ever tell you that she was concerned that he had a gun on August 10th? Not that I recall. She had uh, sent photos to the state attorney's office purportedly showing a bulge in Mr. Burns' clothing that she believed hid a gun. Are you aware of those photos or did you have any conversation with her about that? No. So you never asked her to go back and contact the state attorney's office after the fact to now claim that Mr. Burns had a gun? No. Did you ever help Miss Colby research um, Brooke Orsini in any fashion, look up her pending cases or background, anything like that? Not that I recall. The letter that we referenced earlier that you wrote on October 31st of 2023 that was a complaint about me, did you show that to Miss Colby before it was finalized? I don't recall. I don't think so. <coughs> Would you agree with me that that letter that you sent was um, on your House of Representatives letterhead? Yes. Okay. Do you have any explanation of why, why Miss Colby would have sent a draft of that letter that was not on your letterhead to the state attorney's office on the same day? I don't. Did you take screenshots of the letter before you finalized it and send it to Miss Colby? I don't remember doing that. Now at the time that you wrote that letter of complaint, um, you had a deposition a few days later. Would you agree? It was scheduled. It didn't happen. No, I would not agree. Okay. You're not aware that the, a deposition was scheduled for you on November 3rd, a few days after your October 31st letter? 
I don't believe at the time I sent that letter I had any idea what the contents I don't know. I don't remember. It's, it, it's so much sleaziness, it's hard to keep track of it all. Mm-hmm. Well, you were interviewed by the Sheriff's Department about the, na- the contents of that complaint. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So if you mentioned during the audio recording of that interview that you knew you had a deposition coming up in a few days, that would probably be the more accurate recollection. Yeah, I, like, yeah it would. I, like I said, it's hard to keep track of all the sleaziness involved with these people. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with me that when you were interviewed by the Sheriff's Department about that complaint? Hey, I'm sorry. I, I think, go back and ask me. I think you put words in my mouth. So if you would ask the question again. Which question was that? Whatever your last question was about about knowing I had a deposition and that sort of thing. Okay. Well, you gave an audio recording to the police about. Okay. So if you could, it would be helpful if you want to ask me about if you can quote what I said in that interview because I don't recall acknowledging that I had a known deposition coming up. Okay. So, uh, All right. So well, let me let me ask you this way: You gave an audio statement to the police after regarding me. Basically, yeah, regarding you know, uh, the, right, the criminal activity. Correct. Okay. I don't remember when I gave the statement. Okay. After your after the fake process server showed up and banged on the windows of my office. Yes. Right. And you talked to two detectives from BCSO. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. And they took an audio statement from you. Is that correct? I I don't remember, but okay. I guess they did. Okay. But you gave them a statement. Right? I did. They came to interview me about the criminal activity. Okay. Um, and you've never reached out to them to correct anything that you might have said in that statement. I mean, you've never realized that anything that you said was wrong after the fact, did you? I don't remember what I told them. Okay. So, so, Do you no. have any reason to believe that anything you told them was incorrect? No. Okay. Um, it was brought up that you believe that Mr. Burns was involved in that incident. Do you recall believing that and why you would have believed that? Yes, I do. Okay, tell me about that. Um, around the time of the incident, um, when your when your contractor banged on the door and threatened you know to get his way, and then you called the office and and threatened us and left that threatening message. Right around that same time, Mr. Burns um, sent you know a, a threatening email um, to me. So. You or your invest, you or your investigator, or your your contractor had obviously told him about what had happened. Mm-hmm. And isn't it also true that this was close in time to when depositions were scheduled for you, whether or not they've been coordinated with you or not, but they were scheduled. I I don't know. Okay, so you don't recall as you sit here today whether or not you had a deposition a few days later after the complaint. Of October 31st. No, I don't. If I remember right, you'd wanted to, you know, do depositions with like 10 minutes notice, and mm-hmm. but I don't remember when I found out the dates or anything else. Highly unprofessional. Okay. Well, whatever you would have told the detectives would be accurate. Is that correct? I would have told the detectives whatever I thought was accurate at that time. I don't remember okay. what I told them. And I and if you want to ask me about it, I'd suggest you give me a transcript or something like that. Yeah. But I because you obviously have listened to it, I have not since the time and I'm happy to answer questions about it, but you know, it, again, on the propriety and the prof- professionalism, if you'd like to ask me questions about my interview, you should sh- ask me, show me the interview and you can ask me questions about it. Do you recall that it was a sworn interview? I do. Okay. And I believe um, your assistant was interviewed as well, is that correct? I don't know who else they interviewed.
So to be clear, you never contacted Phil Archer to advise him that a summons had been requested by Melbourne Police Department on a complaint against Robert Burns. I think I've answered that question repeatedly. Yeah, well, I have a little bit more detail now, so just to be clear. That I contact, the, yeah. not that I recall, no. How did you first become aware of Mr. Burns? Um, I believe it was when he became the campaign manager to his cousin, uh, Kenny Johnson, in Palm Bay. Okay. But I don't, I don't remember. Who's Marcy Atkins? She is someone who ran against me in, I think, 2020 for, uh, when I was running for re-election. She was uh, my primary challenger in 2020. Okay. Was Mr. Burns her campaign manager as well? That's my understanding. Okay. So was that the first time or was it, or was the first time in relation to Kenny Johnson? I honestly don't know. Uh, I don't even know that it was in relation to Kenny Johnson, but it was before 2020. Okay. So, the first time that you learned about Mr. Burns is when he was someone's campaign manager, would you agree? I honestly don't remember how I became aware of him. Okay. It may have been even before, before that. I just don't remember. Did you run against Kenny Johnson? No. Did you oppose Kenny Johnson politically? Yes. Did Mr. Burns write articles about you um, in reference to Kenny Johnson that were not favorable towards you? I, he's written, you know, many fake blogs about me. I don't know about Kenny Johnson, but it's, you know, probably dozens, if not hundreds, of unfavorable articles the about fake, you. Of fake, yeah, fake articles okay. about me. Fake and unfavorable. Would you agree? Yeah, they're yeah they're they're fake and negative. Okay, negative. All right. And he has um, written some negative articles about things involving your wife as well. I'm not going to answer questions about that. Well, that's just a yes or no. Not going to answer questions okay. about that. Well, um, did he write some negative articles about your wife's fundraiser? I'm not going to answer questions about that. And if you continue asking questions about my wife, this interview will end. Okay. So that's well, up that to you whether you want to continue or not. But I'm not going to answer questions okay. about that. Well, let's do this. You're aware that I have in my possession text messages between you and Janice Crisp. I have no idea what you have in your possession. Okay. Have you seen those posted on uh... there, Mr. Baining? Have you seen some text messages between you and Miss Crisp posted? I believe so. Okay. You want to review those? No, I'm waiting for questions? your question. Okay. No. So you've been handed what we're going to call a composite exhibit two um, that is uh, 
appears to be a composite of several text messages. Do you recognize those? Yeah, I think I know what they are. Okay, what are they? I think these are uh, these are a sampling, um, you know, some text messages between me and Janice Crisp. Okay, and Janice Crisp is who, to clarify for the record? You know, a, a I don't know, a, a person in Brevard County who's been involved in politics, I guess. Has she volunteered for you in the past? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean... I've known her in politics. I don't know whether she's volunteered. I think she has, but I, I, I don't remember. But she may have been a campaign volunteer. Okay. Have you ever referred to Janice Crisp and Karen Colby as your crazies? Not that I recall. Okay. But you had Janice Crisp's cell phone number. I just sent out thousands of pieces of mail, and my cell phone number's in all of them. So, okay. so my cell phone number's not a widely secret secret thing. Okay. Lots of people have my cell phone number. So referring you uh, back to what is composite exhibit two, let me direct your attention to a few of these. Okay. Would you believe, would you agree that these are generally conversations about Mr. Burns and Ms. Colby and what happened? I don't know, but if you want to ask me a specific question about, okay. about this, I'm happy to try and answer it. All right, so on page three, um, it appears that Ms. Cripps states, quote, she pre-cooked him, and your response is, quote, might be the only way to get him in one of the two places he should be, end quote. Do you see that? I do. Do you agree that you made that text? This might be, yeah. Okay. Okay. What were you referencing? What is the one of the two places he should be? I don't recall. As you sit here today, do you agree with that statement? I, I don't remember what I was referencing. Okay. So you don't recall what you were referencing as one of the two places he should be? Nope. Okay. But you previously called for Mr. Burns to be incarcerated, would you agree? Yes. Okay. Uh, page nine. And I should have them tab for your convenience. Um, it appears that you make a send a text message, quote, he attacked my wife, I will never rent until he is where he deserves relent. I will revel in his suffering, end quote. Did you make that text? Yep. Okay. Yes. And so uh, I asked you earlier about your wife. You said you would not talk about that, but it's safe to say that you're very protective of your wife and you considered Mr. Burns to have attacked your wife. Um, this is your second warning. I would encourage you to move along. Third no. one, we're done. No. I mean, the question is, I'm not do you consider talk Mr. Burns to have attacked your wife? I'm not gonna talk about my wife. So. Do you agree that you made this text? I agree I made this text. Do you disagree with anything in the text? No. Okay. Let me direct you. Well, yes. I mean, there's a typo. Or other than the typo, do you disagree with any of the contents of the text? No. All right. Um, let me direct your attention to the next tab, which should be page 24. And it appears that you say, quote, trust me, I am dealing with this personally. I want to watch that animal rot in jail, end quote. Do you agree that you made that text? Yes. And you're referring to Mr. Burns? Yes. Okay. And what did you mean when you said, I am dealing with this personally? I mean, I'd talked to Karen about it, so I wasn't just reading about it. You know, I'd had her call me in tears, hyperventilating, scared out of her mind. Okay. You didn't contact any officials? about dealing as part of your way of dealing with it personally? Not that I recall. Let me direct your attention to the next tab. It should be page 33. It appears that you are saying to Janice Chris, quote, seeing Burns in prison is a key goal of mine, not about her. If he did it to me, what he did to her, I would have stood my ground, end quote. Would you agree that you made those texts? Yes. Okay. You still agree with that? I don't recall what some of this is in reference to, so okay. I can't. All right. Do you still agree that seeing Burns in prison is a key goal of yours? Yes. Okay. All right. Directing your attention to the next tab, which should be page 36.
It appears that you send a text to Janice Crisp that says, quote, I really could care less. This guy came after my wife. I will do everything in my power and legal to make him suffer, end quote. Do you agree that you made that text? Yes. Do you disagree with anything in the contents of that text? No. Well, I, I, I step back. I don't know what some of this is referring to. Well, do you agree that it's referring to Mr. Burns? I, I agree with the, I mean, I don't know what the first sentence I really could care less is in reference to, right. but, 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 you know, the next two sentences, I don't disagree. Okay. So just for so the record is clear, the next two sentences being, quote, this guy came after my wife, period, I will do everything in my power and legal to make him suffer, end quote. Yeah, and we're getting close to the third strike, so. Okay, but you agree with that? Yep. Okay. All right, page... 47, which should be the next tab. Um, you, it appears that you send a text to Janice Chris stating, quote, anyone fighting Robert Burns, I will help you, her, anyone, end quote. Do you agree you sent that text? Yes. Okay. And you don't disagree with the contents of that text? Not at all. Okay. Next tab should be page 49. It appears, you, it appears you send a text to Janice Chris saying, quote, this isn't about Karen. This is about someone who has raped a half dozen women that we know of, abused children, hurt dozens of people in Brevard, and attacked my mom who has, it appears to say, Alzheimer's, um, end quote. Do you agree you sent those text messages? Yes. Okay. Next tab, which should be page 52. It appears that Janice sends you a text at the top that says, quote, you are blinded by the grudge, and I'm entitled to mine, as will the voters of Brevard, end quote. And you respond, quote, this is far more than a grudge, and I won't be distracted from it, end quote. Do you agree that you sent that response to Ms. Crisp? Yes. Okay. And then the next tab should be page 53. Actually... It goes on 52 to 53. It appears that Janice sends you a, a text that says, quote, you are not his judge and jury, end quote. And you say, quote, for what he's done to my family, yes, I am, end quote. Did you send that text? Yes. All right, get that to the court reporter, please. Have you ever told people that Mr. Burns was kicked out of the Army? I don't recall. Have you ever spoken to Brooke Orsini's sister? No. I mean, not that I know of. Okay. I don't even know who her sister is. All right. Have you ever communicated with the state attorney's office about a motion to provoke Mr. Burns' bond? No, not that I, no, not that I, I don't believe so. Have you ever communicated with them about the fact that you believed that Mr. Burns had committed new crimes while he was on bond? I don't believe so, no. 
Okay, I don't have any further questions. Either way, if you want to explain. Well, Mr. Beatty, do you? I do. Okay. Mr. Fine. Yeah. The conversation that you and I had, isn't it true that you contacted me after you'd been listed as a witness and asked me for legal advice regarding what your status is as a witness? I think so. I think I asked more than that, but yeah. Okay. Isn't it true that what I responded to you was that I would not give you any legal advice and that you had to hire your own attorney? Yes. Okay. Was there any other subject matter that we discussed? I think I asked you, as I said before, if my inability to do the deposition, you know, the, the, the other side chose to wait until I was in the middle of legislative time in order to get me involved in this. And I was concerned, as it turned out to be the case, that I wouldn't be able to do it because of my legislative business. And I didn't want my inability to do this to cause trouble in your case. And I asked you if it would cause difficulty, and I believe you said no. Um, and then you said, go get a lawyer. And that's all we talked yeah, that's about? Correct. Was you asking me for legal advice regarding your situation as a um, as a witness, is that correct? I guess. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what legal advice is. But I, okay. I, I called you to ask you if my being unable to do this when she wanted it done in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, on five minutes' notice, okay. in the middle of my legislative duties, would cause problems with you prosecuting the case. I don't believe you and I had spoken before that ever. Okay, but we did not discuss the case nope, itself. We did not. Okay, and you and I have never communicated other than that one instance, that one phone call. Correct. Okay. We've never had any communication off the record, indirectly, or anything regarding this case. That's correct. I just wanted to know if okay. my inability to do this, I, I think she wanted me to be deposed like in December. I don't remember, but it was in the middle of committee weeks and everything else, and I knew it was unlikely I'd be able to do it for a while, and I wanted, it, I wanted to know if it would cause a problem to you during your job, and that was it. And I simply, and as a result yeah. of our conversation, you retained Mr. Lamb. Yeah. Okay. Do you recall that conversation was after um, the October 30th incident? I don't, I don't recall when it was. It was after I learned that you wanted me to be a witness to an event I was not at. Was it after my investigator had come to your office? I don't know. I have no further questions. Anything else, Mr. Beatty, in that regard? Nope. Mr. Landman, you can explain it if you'd like, or I can. Go ahead. Your you have the right to read or waive reading of the transcript if it is prepared. If you don't elect to read, you can't necessarily change anything that you testified to, but you can indicate if you think it was incorrectly typed out. It is being court reported, recorded, and videotaped, so inaccuracies are not likely, but you do have that right, and there's no right or wrong uh, answer to that. So would you like to read it before it's finalized, the transcript, or waive reading? You want my opinion? Sure. I recommend waive. It's not worth your time, but it's your call. If you, if you want to read it, I believe Madam Court Reporter, you need a phone number to contact the gentleman, correct? Yes, sir. Your call. Well, if I waive, can I still have a copy of it? Of course. It has okay. nothing to do with it. Okay. Then I'll waive, but I'd like a copy. Okay. Would either party you like a copy of the video? Yes, please. Yes. Synced or what's that? Synced with the transcript or just anything? Uh, synced with the transcript would be great. Yeah. I'd like I don't it. need the video. I want a copy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll take one. Do you want a synced or? Sure. Synced one. Okay. This concludes the deposition of Randy Fine. Going off the video record, the time is 11:05 a.m. Okay. Yes. Do you need me to type it?